Hello, I'm Pastor Rick Johnston of Calvary Braid Valley, and I'm bringing today the third segment of our Lenten Reflections on Christ's Journey to the Cross. Now, Lent is an unfamiliar concept to me. I was not raised in a church that follows that tradition, um, and I've never attended a church that observes Lent. So it's, it's different to me, but I have found it to be a great blessing as our lives become injected into that day, that awesome day of Christ's suffering that he endured for us. That day began the night before in the Garden of Gethsemane as Mark McConnell and Emma Carson brought to us the reflection on the agony that Christ suffered in the garden there. Sarah Groves last week brought us a reflection on the betrayals that Christ endured on his way to the trial and the cross eventually. Today we have Simon's encounter with Jesus on his journey to the cross. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you would reveal to us, you would show us, Lord, uh, what you have for us as we look at Simon. Lord, help us to relate to you as relating to this man. And Father, we pray that you would reveal and show yourself more to us as we reflect and think about your journey to the cross. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as you know, the four Gospels it takes to tell us the story of Jesus. They all basically are telling the same story. The difference is in the details. And so all of the Gospels tell that after the, uh, after the trial, the unjust trial that Jesus suffered, he was given over to Roman soldiers. Those Roman soldiers treated him horribly. They whipped him. They beat him. They scourged him, lashing his back open with the cat of nine tails whip. They mocked him, ridiculing him, putting a robe on him, kneeling before him and plating together a crown of thorns which they jammed on his head and then beat him over the head on it. So he was bloodied, he was bruised, he was mocked, he was humiliated publicly. And then the Gospel of John tells us simply that they took him and he went out to Calvary bearing his cross. Now, the cross, we realize, isn't the whole cross that he was on. He actually was bearing the cross beam. The cross beam that he would be nailed to. The Romans called this the patibulum. And because of that, that's why I was, I'm out here among these, this wood and, and this uh, logs that was piled up here. It's from a tree that was cut down about a year ago. And I helped stack up these logs and these woods. And I'll tell you, they're heavy. They're rough. They're difficult to handle. They are solid. That patibulum weighed about 30 to 40 pounds. I don't know how anybody could have carried it all the way from Jerusalem town center to the cross at Calvary. But Jesus did. They forced Jesus to carry his cross. And on his way out to Calvary, something happened though. The other three Gospels tell us this. In Matthew, it records that as they were, as they were heading toward Calvary, they found a man named Simon, who was of Cyrene. And they compelled him, they forced him to carry Jesus's cross. Now, Cyrene was uh, the, where this man was from. 
is a city that was in North Africa. Today it's be in the country of Libya. It was founded by the Greeks about 600 years before Christ. And it had a very large population of Jews. And so many Jews came to Jerusalem from Kyrene. And this man was one of them. Minding his own business, coming into Jerusalem, all of a sudden he was forced by the Roman soldiers to come and carry this heavy patibulum that Jesus was heading, taking with heading toward the cross. Why did the Roman soldiers do this? Well, was it an act of mercy? Just giving Jesus some relief? No, don't think so. That's just not the Roman way. They weren't like that. Well, was it an act of expediency? Jesus had been severely treated. He was weakened, uh, weakened and bloodied from all that he had suffered before. And he probably stumbled and fell. And the Romans said, we just want to get this over with. Let's find someone to carry the cross for him. And they looked around and they saw Simon. And they forced the cross onto Simon. There's another reason that may have been uh, why the Romans compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross. They had been mocking Jesus. Jesus was being crucified, uh, condemned as the king of the Jews. They had mocked him in false worship as king before they sent him out. And perhaps they took this man, Simon, in mockery of Jesus saying, well, if he's a king, we can't let him have the drudgery of bearing his cross. Let's get a servant for him. Because as the king of the Jews, we can't allow this to happen. So it's an act of mockery. But most likely, it was because Jesus was just exhausted, too weak, too, uh, uh, he was just stumbled and had difficulties in carrying the cross. Well, in the book of Luke, it tells us that this Simon was coming in to Jerusalem from the countryside when he was seized by the Roman um, uh, soldiers and forced to follow Jesus with Jesus' cross. Now, this gives an interesting picture. We see Simon coming one direction. He was coming in most likely as a Jew coming into Jerusalem that day to buy a Passover lamb for the Passover feast. He was doing his religious duty and all of a sudden he was interrupted in that duty and forced to carry the cross back outside of town. It's a picture of repentance. He was fought coming one way and changed and went the opposite direction. He was coming in alone. Luke also tells us that there was a large crowd that had followed Jesus from the center of Jerusalem. And in this crowd, it included a lot of women who were weeping and wailing and lamenting over Jesus. Well, Jesus being relieved of the cross, Luke records he was able to interact with these women and speak to them. But this large crowd was following Jesus and this one man was coming in alone. And this man was compelled to pick up Jesus' cross and carry it for him to Calvary's hill. The third of, the, of these synoptic gospels, Mark, tells us more detail that's really telling. It says in Mark that this Simon was the father of Rufus and Alexander. Now, we don't know for sure who Rufus and Alexander were. But one thing is for sure, they were known 
to the Christian church, and they were known to Mark as he wrote his gospel, which tells us one thing. Simon was changed forever that day. He was forced to follow Jesus with his cross, but he ended up following Jesus for the rest of his life. This was a day that changed Simon forever. It was a day that he changed his heart. It was a day that he changed his life. He was forced to follow Jesus, but he chose to stay with him. He was forced to carry the cross of Jesus, but he chose to stay following Jesus and bear his own cross. As Jesus said, unless you take up your cross daily and follow after me, you cannot be my disciple. So we can see ourselves in Simon. And I hope you see yourself in Simon as having done the same thing that he did that day. That day you can just imagine what he saw, what he experienced. Mm -hmm. He was coming in that day to purchase a lamb for Passover. He saw the Lamb of God slain for our sins, the ultimate Passover lamb, God's sacrifice. And it changed him. When we see Jesus like this, it changes our lives. And we see ourselves in Simon choosing to change our direction and to follow Jesus the rest of our lives. And I pray that you have done so too. And let's pray for this now. Lord, it's a wonderful thing to follow you. It's a sacrifice for ourselves to follow you, but in pale, in comparison, Lord, with your sacrifice for us that paid it all. Lord, you are the Lamb of God that was slain to take away our sin. And Lord, we believe you. We trust you. And when we reflect and think of the agonies and the sufferings you undertook for our behalf, we can't help but love you. Lord, we, like Simon, are humbled to heart when we look at the cross and we consider the cost. Lord, let this reflection, let this idea remain in our hearts this day and for the rest of our lives. Help us, God, to follow after Jesus. Help us, Lord, to remain with you. We love the Lord. And we, I, I thank you so much for this. Well, we have a, um, our uh, worship leader, before he had to return to America, I asked him, um, Ernie Valenzuela, to choose a song to lead us in worship to cement this. And he's done a wonderful job. So here is Ernie. Hey guys, as Rick was sharing this story, and as he asked me to pick a song for this story, the song I Will Follow came to heart uh, by Chris Tomlin. And throughout the song, it's talking about wherever you go, wherever you lead me, I'm going to follow you. That even if in this life I lose, I will follow you. And that's what Simon did on Jesus's worst day where he would physically take upon the sins of the world. Simon followed him. So I just pray that this ministers to you. So here it goes.
just 